but it is my great honor to welcome you to the Milken Institute School of Public Health at the George Washington University for this crucial and very timely discussion of community health models in humanitarian contexts. Today's workshop organized by our wonderful friends at the Mario Foundation offers a platform to explore innovative approaches to one of the most urgent public health challenges of our time, strengthening community health systems to meet the needs of displaced populations while supporting local community health. We are privileged to have two extraordinary speakers with us today. First, Dr. Jean-William Pomp, co-founder and director of the GHESKIO in Haiti, who's pioneering work in infectious diseases and community-led healthcare models has brought life-saving services to some of the world's most vulnerable populations. Dr. Pop's experience in navigating healthcare provision through times of crisis is unmatched, and his insights into the Haitian context, especially amid ongoing civil unrest, are invaluable. We are also fortunate to hear from Joseph Nejar Pellet, the Mario Foundation's Middle East Regional Manager and Lebanon Representative. Her leadership in strengthening primary health care systems in Lebanon amidst an influx of migrants and displaced persons sets an example of resilience, partnership, and in innovation and in public health. And it's hard for me to believe in the context of what's happening today in, in Lebanon that this was planned well in advance, but it couldn't be more timely for the topic of this conference. I also want to point uh, to a couple of the people in the audience who work here at the School of Public Health. Um, Dr. Wolfgang Munar, um, he is um, the director of our Gil Lebovic Center for Health and Human Rights. The center specializes in primary health. What, 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 what is it? What does it even say that? I know that's not true. The, the Gil Lebovic Center for Health in the Caribbean and Latin America, which has a focus on health um, in the broader region of, um, of um, the Caribbean and Central America. Um, we also have um, with us um, Dr. Tim Holtz, who is the new director of our Redstone Center for Prevention and Wellness. This is um, a, a center that is dedicated to global as well as national and local issues around promotion of prevention and wellness. And um, I think that this conference is timely for Dr. Holtz because he is looking at these areas of humanitarian health and, and the health of displaced people as an excellent area for us to move in terms of broader prevention and wellness um, issues. Dr. Holtz also as well, like the Mario Foundation, has dedicated much of his career to the prevention of tuberculosis uh, transmission. And um, which I think is an excellent model for how infectious diseases can track problems of displaced populations and, and refugees and migrants conditions where people are overcrowded, where there's limited access to medical care, where the availability and the um, even the purity of medications that might be available is uncertain where prescription practices can result in creating antibiotic resistance even, and more certainly people don't have the social stability, the nutritional stability, all of the foundational um, things in, in health that are needed to be resilient in the face of infectious diseases like TB, which seriously, we can conquer, we can conquer. At the Milken Institute School of Public Health, our MPH in Humanitarian Health and Disaster Response, led by Dr. Ramin Asghari, who's in the front row, get your hand up, um, equips future public health leaders with the critical skills to address health issues in complex humanitarian settings. Um, Dr. Asghari has several uh, Masters of Public Health students who are intent on becoming practitioners in this field. Probably some of them are here with you today, and I'm sure that he would be, um, will later be able to discuss with you um, how that program prepares our students to meet those challenges. 
I think I see some of the students. Raise your hands. <laughs> it's great to see you here. Um, our Antibiotic Resistance Action Center also has been at the forefront of raising awareness about antibiotic resistance, mainly how the misuse or ineffective use of antibiotics contributes to its development and, of course, how we can then control that. They have focused a lot on the misuse of antibiotics in agriculture, which some people think is appropriate use, but which is increasingly becoming um, illegal in many countries as well as the misuse in clinical practice. These kinds of models provide a roadmap for addressing current and future challenges poised by displacement, um, migration, and crises. Um, we're fortunate that the World Health Organization has emphasized the need for inclusive health systems and humanitarian crises, integrating physical, mental, and social health into community-based care. Um, we are heartened by the kinds of efforts that actually the Mario Foundation embodies, which bring these elements together. And it, it does not constitute a top-down approach, it constitutes an approach that builds capacity, builds resilience in health systems. So as we listen to today's presentations and engage in discussions, I encourage us all to think deeply about collaborating across disciplines and borders to provide comprehensive health services to migrants, displaced persons, and their host communities. The lessons we take from today will not only inform our work here, but also contribute to the global movement toward more inclusive and resilient health systems. And on the way here today, I was reflecting about all of the displaced persons in this country in the wake of this massive hurricane that flooded much of Appalachia and, and how many people are now homeless in that region, people who have very limited resources, very, severe limits in what's available for public health to support those individuals. I was also thinking about the displaced people who were camped out right out there across the street, they're right out there in tents, and that we, we don't see them every day. Maybe we don't see the people in Lebanon. We don't see the people certainly um, in most of the world that where people are displaced and suffering because of wars, conflicts, hurricanes, earthquakes, pandemics, you name it. Um, but I'm now pleased to introduce um, one of my favorite faculty members who's been so dedicated his entire life to addressing these kinds of problems, Dr. John Andrews, who's professor of global health and a tireless advocate for evidence-based vaccine use in developing countries. Over his distinguished 35-year career, Dr. Andrews has held pivotal roles, including deputy director of the Pan American Health Organization. He continues to lead global immunization efforts to the world via WHO advisory groups, he has benefited immensely from the Mario Foundation's support, allowing him to further his critical work in global immunization and public health preparedness. And he makes a magnificent contribution to the education of our students. He's truly a font of information and a role model that I know that many of them will seek to try to emulate you know, in their future careers. The Mario Foundation's commitment to advancing public health through collaboration and innovation aligns perfectly with our mission here at the Milken Institute School of Public Health. Together, we're better positioned to tackle the complex health challenges uh, facing vulnerable populations. <laughs> now, before turning things over to John, I do wanna express my deepest gratitude to Corin and the leadership at the Mario Foundation. Your continued support of you, you know, in terms of how you are building your mission, how well you partner with us. It's such a pleasure to be able to host you um, at this meetings. You're being able to bring people um, here who can share their expertise. I'm just so grateful to you for this partnership. Thank you so much. 